Reactions in aqueous solution. First, the precipitation reactions. Let's consider a salt dissolving. One must learn to recognize what that little S and AQ mean. It's showing how a solid salt is becoming an aqueous solution. Actually, the ions have separated, dissociated from each other. Consider a water particle, which we know is a dipole, to be represented just like that, a negative and a positive side to the molecule. Then this is a much better representation. The positive ions, the sodium ions, are surrounded by a jacket of water molecules. Notice how the negative side of the water molecule is closest to the positive sodium ion, and vice versa with the chloride ion. These forces are called ion dipole forces. And if the collective sum of all these little ones is bigger than the ionic bond, then it will dissolve. And when it dissolves, because the ions are free to move, they are good conductors of electricity. So here's my conductivity tester. When you touch the terminals or bridge it with a conductor, then the bulb glows. Here's some tap water. As we push it in deeper, you see it conducts slightly. That's because tap water has a very low concentration of salts dissolved in it. Pure water, however, does not conduct electricity. Salt, as a solid, does not conduct electricity. But when I put it into salt solution, salt water, it's a very good conductor. Solubility rules for salts. Not all salts dissolve in water. All the group 1 alkali metal salts dissolve, ammonium salts, nitrate salts. Most halides, except for silver, lead, mercury, and most sulfates, except barium sulfate. These are mostly insoluble, the carbonates, hydroxides, oxides, sulfides, and phosphates, except rule 1 and 2 above. Here we have potassium iodide salt. We dissolve these in deionized water. And here we have lead nitrate salt. Even heavy metal salts can dissolve as nitrates. Mixing them we see instantly a yellow precipitate of lead iodide. After a while, the precipitate settles on the bottom. We have just seen that lead nitrate, a clear solution, plus potassium iodide, also a clear solution, makes instantly this bright yellow lead iodide precipitate. Don't forget that these AQ symbols means that the ions are all separated. They are all dissolved. Lead iodide is insoluble, meaning when these are put in together, they automatically stick together, forming the precipitate. These remain in solution. Sometimes you will see arrows drawn downwards. We know that precipitates all eventually settle on the bottom. We can also think of this as an ion exchange program. The nitrates and the iodides are swapping around and these ones are insoluble. Some other reactions. Here we have potassium carbonate. The reason for only using the bottom third of the test tube is that we can shake it quite vigorously and get them to dissolve. And here we have the halides and finally sulfates. Silver nitrate. We add a few drops of silver nitrate to the potassium carbonate 
and we see this white precipitate of silver carbonate. Similarly with the halides, silver chloride precipitate, silver bromide, which is slightly off-white, and silver iodide, which is the yellowest of the three. So if we add a few drops of nitric acid, we see the carbonate effervesces, it decomposes the precipitate, the carbonate, into carbon dioxide. And after a while, we'll see that the precipitate has totally disappeared, unlike the others. And in the final test tube, the iodide is oxidized to iodine, whilst the precipitate remains. When silver nitrate was added to the carbonate solution, a white precipitate of silver carbonate forms. Similarly, with the chloride solution, a white precipitate of silver chloride, the bromide was slightly off-white creamy color and the iodide was the yellowest of them all. We then added nitric acid to these precipitates. The carbonate one decomposes into carbon dioxide. These bubbles can be seen and we say it effervesces when the bubbles come off. With the chloride and bromide there was no reaction. But interestingly, with the iodide, it formed this browny color. That's because, interestingly, with the iodide, it formed this browny color. Here we have the excess iodide in solution that's reacting with the nitrate component of the acid, forming iodine. We call this a redox reaction. The iodide ion has lost an electron to form iodine. This process is called oxidation and redox reactions are a video on their own. Mixing soluble sodium sulfate with barium chloride gives us a white precipitate of barium sulfate. And after a little while it settles on the bottom. Sulfates don't react with the acids or silver chloride, but it will form an insoluble white precipitate of barium sulfate when we add a soluble barium chloride. Well, that's it so far. Be sure to join us in the next one in this series called Gas Forming Reactions.